Welcome to Merlot Field. I'm Adam Sussman, joined by my broadcasting partner, Mark Angela Harrison, San Diego, for a their great game on the dock at the University of Portland. Is visited by San Diego, not University of California, San Diego. Portland beat them earlier this month, but San Diego, their fellow WCC conference fellow San Diego struggling this year, Ange, one and nine. What do you see out of them? I see a team that's hungry, ready to have some redemption. You know, they have uh, all of their last five games have been losses, but they've only been shut out once. You know, 2-1 losses, 3-1 losses. They're very much in these games. You know, they lost 3-2 to Gonzaga after being up 2-1 uh, last weekend. And this is a team that fights and is hungry and is ready to come try to get their uh, win today. Let's look at Brian Quinn's squad, the head coach in his fourth season. He's done relatively well so far. Last full campaign, 2019, they had a really positive record. Not too many surprises in this lineup. One that is of note, Michael Barra was a former University of Portland player back in 2019. He's certainly going to want his revenge. Oh, absolutely. And he's, you know, done a really good job anchoring the defense. A couple of other big changes for Quinn is uh, Nick, Nicholas Clausen not in the lineup as well as uh, Marley Mascarenas uh, not getting the start in goal. They're going with Burke uh, Watson. And so this will be a couple changes from Quinn, just trying to maybe keep some things fresh and and give them some energy or some options off the bench. Burke Watson, one start so far this year. Play the full game against UC Irvine. Now let's look at the home team side. We talked about it pregame. It is going to be a traditional 4-4-2 for them. A couple of changes on the back line. RJ Stretch checks out. Paul Odenhall in at the center back position. Delens Pierre coming in at fullback. Since he's come back from injury, really strong. Has looked really good. An attacking fullback similar to how Bonilla plays. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Nick Harlan Voigt really playing kind of the long game here. RJ Stretch is on four yellow cards. If he picks up another one, he could be suspended. So really kind of taking care and managing minutes there. And, you know, really great to see Jacob Babalai earning uh, a starting spot. He's been, been performing well, uh, Carlin Voigt tells me, and is ready to get his shot to start. We're going to see that all and next. Kickoff coming to you soon after this break. Thanks for joining us here on the CW and the WCC Network. Welcome back to Merlot Field. We're moments away from kickoff. Portland wearing their all-white uniforms while San Diego wearing a sky blue. Let's go over the player to watch for the University of San Diego. Luke Pardo from Southampton, England, has started all but one game this season. Has two goals, a goal against Cal State Fullerton and one against UC San Diego. Has 11 shots, six on goal, almost 700 minutes played. They're missing two of their key strikers this season. To injury, not on the trip. What do you expect from him today? I expect him to want to shine. I mean, obviously, Clausen, it looks like, appears to not have made the trip for San Diego. So it's down to Luke Pardo to now shoulder this offensive load. San Diego has a lot of players getting assists, but right now it was Clausen and Pardo, the only ones scoring goals. So he's going to have to be the one pulling the strings in attack today for the Toreros. Last time we were here on Merlot Field, University of Portland lost 2-0 to Washington, but Luke Handel played a huge role in that game. A big caveat, he did get a red card, but he was dominating that far left flank. Seemingly he was playing left back and left wing at the same time. Yeah, and you know, he was a key component to Portland's attack last season and is looking 
looking to pick it up this season. He hasn't gotten the assists. He hasn't racked them up like he did last season. But Portland has also played the toughest non-conference schedule in the country, making some of those connections and those assists difficult to find. Yeah, it was all WCC second team. Portland shy for goals in their last three have been shut out in all those over 300 minutes without a goal. But as UC San Diego gets underway, they're a team that's given up three goals per contest, a golden opportunity for Portland to put some in the back of the net. Physical start to this game, and a lot of new additions to this starting lineup for the University of Portland. Tracy, you know, while he's been at the program for a while, he hasn't made too many appearances this season, but seemingly he's going to be in Cambridge's starting spot out wide. Well, and this is a good game for Nick Carlin Voigt to get minutes, get people some opportunity, you know, and, and see what they can do. Because, again, this San Diego team is going to be hungry. They're going to be relentless. But overall, this should be a match that the Pilots manage. And it's going to be down to some of these players that are getting their first opportunity to really start and shine uh, to manage this match and put some goals on the board for the Pilots. Burke Watson, the starting keeper for San Diego. He's been in college soccer. This is his fourth season, but only his second start. He had one earlier this season against UC Irvine. Played his first two years at the University of Southern Florida. A keeper from Georgia. He's, he's used to being at the college ranks, but it's only his second career start. Some nerves probably going through his body. I mean, I think it's more excitement than anything else. I don't know that at this level you're going to be overall nervous about what's going to happen, but you're going to be excited. You're going to have some excited, nervous energy. But I think, you know, he's really getting his opportunity. He's got a second start, second game this year, and, you know, he wants to make the most of it. O'Hara plays it back to Tasso Reese. We've talked about him so much, Tasso Reese, that he almost goes without mention just how good he is. We didn't talk about him too much pregame, but a safe percentage at 800 exactly. You know, last game against St. Mary's, they had zero shots on target. You're not giving your goalkeeper a good chance at a win or a clean sheet when your offense has so little production. Yeah, and, you know, it really comes down to, you know, him and Brian O'Hara, the only two players to have started every game this season for the Pilots. That's a really good spine, a good understanding between the two of them. But, you know, you're right. You've got to make sure that as they're defending, they get into the counter, they get up the field and do more to protect the back line. It's protecting the back line and, and, and making sure that you keep goals off the board has as much to do with attacking and putting goals on the board as making the tackles and blocking the shots. Last game against St. Mary, that was the 2nd of October, just recently. It was the WCC opener. They were shut out 1-0. Portland had zero shots on goal, as I mentioned. It conceded in the 25th minute. Here's San Diego on the attack. Left flank, low cross in. Able to be to -poed, excuse me, towed out by Delance Pierre. Pierre in 2020. I should say the 2020 season, although it was early 2021, was named all WCC preseason, but he did not play. He was injured the entire season. He didn't come back until the Seattle U game where he played a big defensive role late in that one. And since, he's really been challenging RJ Stretch for that fullback position. Excuse me, center back position here as Odin Hall is playing out left. The German, the German on the ball gives it over to Artiega. One thing we were worried about against Washington was a lot of midfielders missing. You have Artiega back, you have Cortez back. Cortez was on a red card that game, couldn't play. Artiega picked up an injury in the middle of September. Now both are back. It may be Greg Tracy playing in the middle with Artiega, but just to have those two faces on the pitch is a big deal. Yeah, that's gonna be a huge boost, uh, especially when you're looking at somebody like Babalai, who wants to score goals, wants to be productive, wants to earn his stripes up top. And really what we're looking for here is just these combinations. What are we trying to develop? What are the passing networks that are developing from all of these play players in this interchange on the field? Just saw a replay of Babalai dribbling into the box. Got past a couple, but the shot could not be registered. And Dell not playing quite as far back as he did against UW, playing a more advanced position. 2020, seven goals, two assists so far this season. Had one assist against Air Force, one against the University of California, San Diego, which Babalai actually finished off. 
who those two are used to linking up. Carrera, who has gotten many starts recently, is still looking for his first goal or assist. Here's Tracy in the midfield. Number 16 picks up his head, gives it over to Bonilla. Bonilla has some space, goes for the early cross. Barrow gets rid of it. Bonilla comes in, deflects off his shin pads, and goal kick coming for Watson. Michael Barrow, interesting college career. Hails from Liverpool. Went to the, went to Campbell University. Helped the Camels win the Big South Championship, make the NCAA playoffs, and was Big South first team. If it's a name that's familiar to those listening, he was at the University of Portland. He transferred here in 2019. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time under Nick Carlin Voigt and took his talents down south to San Diego where he's the captain for today's team as well. Tom Bridge. He would be what they call a journeyman player if he was playing in his native England and, and bouncing around from uh, team to team to team. A lot of international flair on this San Diego team. Six of their 11 starters in today's roster come from overseas, most of them England, one from Germany. Usually a lot of these UC teams, you see Cal State Northridge, UC San Diego, 75 to 80% of the team are usually you know, Californians. Got some Washingtons, some Oregonians mixed in as Pierre gets it out of danger. Tumbridge takes it back on the periphery of the box and back to court, excuse me, to Tasso Reese. But San Diego really are recruiting from all over. For example, they're starting keeper today, while not international, from Rosewell, Georgia. Cortese back to Pierre. Portland currently on their longest losing streak since 2015. Bonilla on the edge of the box, gets it poked away, still fighting for it. Nick Carlin Voigt took over in 2016, meaning this is the longest losing streak of his career. He had a baby boy on Thursday. I think this would be a, a good gift to him to end that <laughs> losing streak. I'm sure he's happy as the world right now, but well, I talked to him a little bit before the game. He's been in the hospital, and uh, best wishes to his wife, Marin, and their daughter, who has now become a big sister, but uh, have yet to name their son. Just enjoying the new addition to the family. Eighth minute of action. Portland have generally held the possession. Pereira. Odenal. I think he was looking back for Pereira. Instead, Tracy finds it. Good crossfield pass to Bonilla. San Diego, in the first couple of minutes and extending out now, a really compact team defending. Well, you don't get to be in their position without knowing a little bit about defending. They've been on the back foot, it seems, almost the entire season with their record and, and how things are going for them. And so, yeah, you expect that Portland is going to run up against a very compact team looking to make sure they're minimizing any opportunity for the pilots to shoot. In that instance, Portland has to be disciplined in possession, pull the ball out. They've got to make sure they keep players on the perimeter, on the fringes, that they can keep pulling the ball out to and just force the gaps for the Toreros to find some better seams to pass short to. Interesting shot there by Pereira. Hits it down into the turf, takes a strong bounce, but into the chest of Watson. And that's the right call on this. As the ball's coming and bouncing in like that, he's got to get over the top of it. Any, if he tries to come and hit that before the bounce or hit it, it's going to go sky, it's going to go probably into the baseball field. You know, he's got to really try to get that down. He's hitting it through traffic, so that's not a bad uh, opportunity uh, in technique for him. Portland with the first shot on goal this game, something they couldn't say against St. Mary's. Here's Babale, has Handel running through the two center backs. He gets onto it. Has it on his right foot, one defender, two coming in support. Give it back to Hendel, stays in an onside position, recycles it out. Artiega to Bonilla. 
seemingly a point of emphasis is to switch the field to play, stretch out the San Diego defense. Pereira has it on the end line, thinks, and gives it back. It was intercepted by number 22, Camerly. Camerly has been with the program since 2018, scored his first collegiate goal this year in a 2-3 loss to Gonzaga last week. And one in nine, but they were picked to finish fourth in the WCC while Portland was picked to finish third. So these two teams, you know, had expectations, had pedigree in the postseason. Portland's still showing it, maybe disappointing a little, losing their last three. But these are two teams that have talent. This is San Diego. This would only be their second losing season in the last decade. So uh, losing is not something either of these teams are accustomed to. Well, in Portland, you look at their losing streak, losing the last three games. It really started with that overtime loss at CSUN. And then, you know, they had to turn around and come back and play UW, which is on probably the hottest of hot streaks in the country in men's soccer. I think they have the best Pac-12 start in, uh, in not only their program history, but Pac-12 history. So, you know, Portland seems to kind of be running into some of these roadblocks. And then you come off a loss like that where you were in the game, they felt that they had chances against UW, and then, you know, they lose their WCC opener. So really it's about momentum for both teams. How can they get it back? How can they try to find some, uh, some ground to get some goals for themselves? Hendel's quarter this time was better than the last. He's going to have a second opportunity to send it in. This one, a lot of air under the ball. O'Hara goes up for it. Being ping-ponged around. Odenhall comes in to take an audacious shot. Deflects off a couple. Portland able to repossess. Good mag on the baseline. Shot coming. Gets past the keeper, but cleared off. Hendel thinks about it from distance. Gives it off to Tracy. Artiega Bonilla. Scored from this spot against UCLA, goes with the cross. It was a little high for Hondell, and an awkward, awkward back header by his own defender forced to tip it over the bar. That's a good read from Watson there. It's a tough one to defend. You're looking at your defenders to clear it, and it just spins off the head as this ball gets some loft on it, and you see it's just mishit coming off the San Diego keeper's head. A ton of spin on that, and Watson times it well to push it over the bar. Except that was Robert Webb's header. I don't think it was a back pass. I think he was intending to just get some air under it and clear it out, but instead it went towards his own net. 13th minute of action, zeros on the scoreboard, but it's mostly been pilot so far. Delance Pierre makes a good run in the box. He's close to it, diving header out. Counter opportunity for San Diego. Blue Kits bombarding forward. It's with Pardo. Gets tripped up in the Merlot field grass, and Pierre can restart play for his squad. I think that was also Cortese's boot in that Merlot field grass that, that <laughs> tripped him up there a little bit. And we talked about that three-game losing streak. I think two red cards in that span as well isn't going to do you any favors. Against Washington, you know, the Hendel one was relatively late. I think it was in the 68th minute. Well, and it was a second caution, too. So it was just a, a, a mental lapse, a mistake on Hendel's part, making that second foul that was a cardable offense that, you know, sat him out for that St. Mary's game. Yeah, well, against Cal State Northridge, Cortez picked it up in the first half. Straight red card, and Portland had to play with 10 nearly that entire affair. Pereira trying to stretch it out to Cortez. Portland usually goes with the youth out wide, being Nava and Cambridge. They, a much older midfield. Cortez, 25 years old, a grad player. While on the far flank, you have Tracy, excuse me, in the midfield, you have Tracy, who is a senior at the University of Portland. Cortez, Pierre. Portland will certainly want to pick up a result. They're off next week. Don't have a game again until the 23rd against number 16 Loyola Marymount. So going into some off days, you want a good taste in your mouth, picking up a victory in the WCC. Five and five so far in the campaign. Both of these teams 0-1 in conference. San Diego lost 2-3 to Gonzaga, while Portland, as we mentioned, lost 0-1 against St. Mary's. 
Here's Hendel, moves it to his left foot, low shot. Burke Watson is there on his knees to collect. That was a strong spell of possession from Portland, and right now they're doing the things that you need to do well and right, holding possession in there just over the halfway line of the field, looking to pull those Torero players out to open up some spaces just like that for Hendel to run in and have that shot. Hendel seemingly controlling the game. He was the right choice and a player to watch for the University of Portland. It's been hard to really highlight an MVP for this team. I think O'Hara and Tasser Reese are good choices at the back, but going forward, there's been a lot of moving parts. Cambridge is someone who was picking up a lot of momentum, but in the three game losing streak, didn't have too much production. We're sure to probably see his pace later on though. Artiega and Cortese play a 1-2 going back to the defense. Two center backs today for Portland, nothing against Jalen Rodwell, but Pierre and O'Hara both are really capable with the ball at their feet and that might have been something Nick Carlin Voigt took into account. If you're playing a 1-9 team who's going to want to play on the counter, having ball capable center backs, they can be part of the attack. Well, especially when you're getting all of your width from your outside backs, you know, with O'Hara, with Bonilla, they're stretching so far wide that the four in the midfield really are a central midfield quartet. You know, they aren't looking to get width from anybody in the midfield. It's coming 100% from um, Bonilla and, um, <laughs> excuse me, from Odenhall. And so really you need to have people at the back that can find those balls up through the middle and can hit the ball out wide on a quick switch to find those opportunities. Handel again, good ball through to Pereira, takes a shot, gets deflected and poked out of play for another Portland corner. A ring of applause from the fans in purple. Handel going to trot over to the near side corner flag again. 17 minutes of action. It's been all Portland so far. On the near side of the pitch, we talked about Odin Hall. He is playing along with Cortez on the left side. Cortez usually a central midfielder, but with Tracy coming in, he shifts out to the left. Punched out by Watson, only as far to Bonilla, who tries to chip the keeper, goes over the bar. Audacious effort. You have to applaud him for that, but it was well over the bar. I think Carlin Voigt would probably want to see him hit something more direct on frame and not try to loft something in. That many bodies in the box, there's a lot of people in the way in the deflection, rebound, all of those different potentials as you see this on the replay. A lot of bodies in front of him and he just tries to kind of loft it up over there. Not a lot. When you're trying to do that, you've got to get it so high to get it over the on Russian defenders that it's going to be really hard to get it to come back down and on to frame. So probably wanted to look for something a little bit more direct there on frame to pick up a deflection or a rebound to somebody else. And Bonilla is capable. Portland beat UCLA for the first time ever in the regular season at UCLA. Bonilla is one goal of the difference. A shot from that location on the outside of the box. San Diego have been outscored 29 to 9 this season. Certainly not a good ratio. Still have more goals this year than Portland do, 9 to 8. They're missing their most prolific attacker in Alex Chernes, who's the point leader in 2020, was picked to the 2021 preseason all WCC team, but hasn't played since the second game of the campaign. Went 3-3-2 three, three and two last season. For those who watched this affair last year, San Diego in Portland, as Pereira has the ball inside the starting circle. Cortez trying to find Tracy, can't get it taken away. They drew Portland 1-1 last year in double overtime, 110 minutes. A lot of players on this pitch right now played that full length. Two seasons ago in 2019 though, San Diego bested Portland 4-2. to two. Just two seasons ago. This was a really good San Diego team. 12-5-1. Narrowly missed out on the tournament. But in Brian Quinn's second season, what a way to get going. Go, 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 
Foul by Bonilla, who left his right back position. Brian Quinn in his fourth season, 22, 15, and eight. Nine, seven, and five in the WCC. He was the assistant coach under longtime head coach Seamus McFadden. He was the assistant for 11 years before taking the starting job. It's quite the soccer career, quite the San Diego soccer legend. Played for the San Diego Soccers. Also has 48 caps, well had 48 caps for the U.S. national team from 1991 to 94. Ball trickles out of play. Pereira can't quite reach, it's gonna be a San Diego throw-in. Corbin May, today's head referee, signals to take a few steps back off the throw-in. Game hasn't been end to end, it's relatively calm so far. Portland has had some distant shot opportunities, have tried to penetrate the box, but I think they're happy with possession right now to wear down the San Diego defense. Well, this is what I'm talking about right here. Portland just having some discipline to find those opportunities, open up these, these seams in here to play. Just a little bit more patience there through the midfield. It was very compact there for the Toreros, bringing their back four and their two mids in there. And Portland maybe needs to swing it out wide to Odendahl there, um, trying to really look for those opportunities. Bonilla onside, crossing the box. It looked like he hit off a hand there, and it is going to be a penalty. I don't think the goal is going to be given. It's going to be a handball beforehand. It wasn't intentional by any means, but it bounces off the turf. We'll see it on the replay. Bonilla puts in a first-time cross. Well, it takes one touch. It bounces right there off the arm. Cortez actually put the ball in the net after the play. And that's a good effort from Webb. He knows he's got, I think it was uh, Babalai coming on his back shoulder. He's just trying to make a difference there as he sees Watson can't quite get it. And just that, that lunge, that stretch for that ball pops the ball up into his hand. Pereira doesn't have a goal yet this season. His UP career has seven goals and six assists. This would be a way midway through the 2021 campaign to mark his presence. And Dell had a talk with him beforehand. Pereira starts moving his boots, hits it with the right high and hard. First goal of the season, UP up 1-0. Watson went the right way, solid dive, but not many keepers are saving that effort from Pereira. It was such an authoritative and confident strike from Alejandro Pereira. Steps up, puts his head down, doesn't need, need, even need to look up, knows where he's going the entire way, and Watson goes for it, goes the right way, but he's not keeping that one out from Pereira. That's four penalty goals on the season now for the University of Portland. And again, that penalty set up by Portland pulling the ball out and then Hendel finding a good opportunity, a good ball to slice through the center back and the outside back for San Diego and create that crossing opportunity that put San Diego in trouble. That goal marks a 330-minute goal drought coming to an end. We raved about Portland's defense earlier in the season when they kept their own 300-plus minute goal drought of opposition. Offensively, they were struggling, but a penalty is a great way to end that. Cortez, off the set piece, hands it over to Tracy. Skips it back to Pierre. Probably been an odd team this season of, you don't often see two red cards in as many games. Also four penalties in the last month. That's pretty good. Dan. Well, it shows that you're being dangerous in the penalty area. Not only are you creating shots, generating opportunities, but you're creating dangerous enough ones where, you know, there's a foul coming either either through a hard shot in coming from a handball or somebody trying to just stop somebody on a breakaway and, you know, denying the, the obvious goal scoring opportunity. It's like Bryce even the defender is going to check out of the game. Even was playing in a six position, that holding center mid, and it's going to be Madukwe coming in. Number eight praise Madukwe. Born in Nigeria, although grew up in California and went to high school there as well. 
Started a good amount of games this season six. Hasn't started the last three now. Played 57 minutes last game against Gonzaga. Three shots on the campaign. Looking for his first career goal though. San Diego, bit of a pep in their step now after going down one nil. You mentioned, you know, unfortunately for them, this is a position they're familiar with. Defensively, they should know how to defend now that they've conceded 30. It's a position that unfortunately are in often. How do you see Portland responding to going up one nil? Because when they played Sacramento State or UC San Diego, they largely shut it down, but the way they're playing so far, no need for that. Well, I think, you know, breaking, as you said, this goal scoring drought is really going to boost their confidence a bit. You know, playing the teams that they have the last couple games and not being able to put the ball in the back of the net is very frustrating. And when you can end it and end it in the fashion that they did, it can really start to open the floodgates as it builds confidence among the team. Babale and Kai Peterson were battling out for the ball. Babale eventually charged with a foul. San Diego switched the field to play quickly. Tunbridge has a large cast wrapped up on his left hand slash forearm. Weight calibration a little bit off. I've broken my arm before. Definitely not fun to play sports with. I have broken both my arms at the wrist area. One was an arm fracture and one was a wrist fracture. Playing soccer or no? Uh, one was roller skating on my eighth birthday. And then <laughs> the other one where I was coaching soccer and one of my players hit the ball so hard at me it broke my wrist, so. Praise Madukwe with the foul there. Tracy over to Bonilla. This is how Portland created a penalty last time. Good cross in, and it's in. Pereira again. Scoreless this season before today has two in about five minutes. Alejandro Pereira, right place, right time. Bonilla's cross again, creating danger. And you see Pereira there giving due to Bonilla, and Bonilla is absolutely do it. What a lovely first time ball in hit so well leads Pereira all the way and if Pereira doesn't finish that I think Bonilla is going to come over and have a word with him just a lovely early cross Pereira splits that <laughs> defense and that's a great goal I don't think he really meant to shot it it kind of just fell in his path and he kept running no that was that was absolutely but that was a great play from Watson to come out and try to do that and Bonilla hit that right so well that's exactly where you want to hit it that's a tough ball for a goalkeeper to get you have to be off your line maybe a step or two more to deal with that ball across because right at the top of the six yard box like that most goalkeepers are staying home but he did the best he could with it Bonilla kept it low and hard about seven yards away from Watson who made the right decision to come out, but inches away from his mitts. Webb passes the halfway line. It's like another sub after the goal came in for San Diego. Taylor Perales, Marietta, California product, went to Marietta Mesa High School, a senior on this team. Hasn't played too many games this year, although had the start against UC San Diego. Cross in, not quite Bonilla quality. That 33 minutes last game against Gonzaga Perales did. And what you see right there, you had three Portland players collapsing around to Suris. That's his first opportunity of the game. And, you know, they gave up the, the goal last game on a, on a ref, on rebound. So Suris came down low to make a save, couldn't hang on to it, and it was a rebound that was just fell right into a St. Mary's player's path. Uh, easy for them to pick up and get that get that finish, and so Portland now doing, paying attention to those things when it goes into Tassouris, making sure that they have his back covered just in case anything goes wrong. Besides the first game of the season, this is the first time Portland has had a 2-0 lead since August during their win streak against University of California, San Diego, UCLA, Sacramento State, Seattle U, 1-0, 1-0, 1-0, and a dramatic 3-2 comeback. So we often say, you know, 2-0, the most dangerous lead in soccer. You hear that 
as long as for other one-score sports like hockey as well. But Portland, the way they're playing dominating possession, you like their chances. Odenhall, accidental collision with Perales there. Apologize for the action right away. No harm, but yes, foul. <laughs> Odenhall is okay. Wouldn't be surprised if hey, Portland grabs one more. We see some other new names besides the likes of Odin Hall and Greg Tracy. 29th minute. Third of the way done. Portland dominant so far. They're not letting up. Hendel and Bonilla sandwich. Luke Pardo. Cortez's ball almost skips into the path of Pereira. Hendel now has it. Chips it over the keeper. That's three. It's a party in Portland. Hendel scores. Pereira was close to the action, but Hendel does it himself. Cheeky right foot finish. Chips it over Watson. And the beneficiary of a little deflection there off the San Diego player, and Bobalai cleans it up for Hendel, and Hendel just a lovely little outside of the right foot uh, flick over the keeper. The absolute right move and right type of finish. Just quality from him. Nothing Burke Watson can do there as a keeper. He came off his line. Really quick decision making by Hendel. Talked about a pregame. San Diego gives up 2.9 goals per game. That's the number we're at right now. You can see right now, San Diego obviously deflated in Portland. So much confidence in possession right now, really working it through, finding these opportunities in the player movement off the ball to put themselves into gaps, to come off the shoulder of the Torero players and put themselves into gaps and really start to let the ball move the opposing players. Uh, it's just really tremendous right now. They've certainly taken their opportunities so far. Tracy got his right elbow high up. Bonilla to the right side, cross in. Hendel, good header. A little bit wide of the net. Two subs coming in from the University of Portland, first of the game. Uba Fofana coming on, as well as Sebastian Nava. Fofana was a normal starter to start the year. Has been an impact sub of recent. He's going to replace Jacob Babalai. Babalai, excuse me, and Sebastian Nava comes into the game as well. Nava takes out Cortese. I'm sure he's happy to be tied now, but... Sebastian Nava's title of top goal scorer now tied with Alejandro Pereira. Fofana goes up top with Pereira. A moment of danger there. Cleared over his own net, Odenhall does. It's going to be a San Diego corner. I don't think that was his intended location <laughs> for that, but you see him wind up and swing so hard. He just slices right underneath the ball and very lucky to at least have the power coming underneath it that puts it over the goal over his own end line rather than slicing it into uh, make trouble for Tasuris. Cross close to the near post. Like number nine Pereira got rid of it. Bonilla. With a lot of pace behind the can he get there just not in time goes back to the San Diego keeper. He's wearing almost perfectly the UP colors. The San Diego keeper is a beautiful dark purple. Tunbridge, good first time pass out to the right. Back with the English midfielder. in this starting lineup for San Diego. Four players from England. 
Clune at the two up top, Pardo and Johnston. John Stone. Sliding tackle by Pierre. It's a little bit late, but still makes ball first. Fofana trying to capitalize on the mistake, similar to Hendel did. San Diego recovered quickly. Give it up the line, stays in play. Pierce touch. Not great, goes out of play. San Diego throwing inside Portland's final third. Territory they haven't been in too much through 33 minutes. After this game, the University of Portland women's team will take on San Francisco, another great WCC game. I'll be kicked off the broadcast for that one, but I know my broadcasting partner, Angela Harrison, will be on. Yeah, they'll, they'll switch me over into your role and we'll, we'll bring somebody, somebody new in in the analyst chair. Madukwe has the ball on midfield. After he passes, it goes up. A lot of legs being stuck in. Eventually it was Nava who took him down. Foul drawn by Pardo. Before coming to the States to play for San Diego, the forward that we highlighted before the game started, played for the AFC Bournemouth Academy. San Diego cannot really connect double digit passes together. Portland has to be out passing UC San Diego, excuse me, San Diego two to one. Tunbridge tries to leave it off. Portland there just in time. Pierre sticks in the leg, left footed shot, deflected. And it's gonna be, I believe a foul on the edge of the box. Dangerous position. Not sure who the yellow card is going to. Pierre is my guess, the closest to Corbin May who gave out the color. And it's going to be a free kick about 20 yards away from Cortez's net. Get another look at it here. Here's Pierre. Yep, steps right on top of that left foot. Yellow card warranted. I'm sure he'll take it in place of not conceding here. It'll be interesting to see if Tunbridge takes this. It was his effort that set this up and really did well to put some good pressure and, and just sneak in and... and and clip that ball away from Portland and then just a lot of individual effort to get him to this position right here. This is one you certainly practice at your local field growing up 20 yards away just outside the box. Tassari starting well far to his right. Tunbridge trying to chip it over the wall got it there but too high. He's frustrated with himself hand on the hip. Tasa Reese not troubled by it at all. And that's just such a hard position as that free kick is you have to get the ball over the wall and down. And you have to have enough pace on it to make sure that the goalkeeper cannot get to it. But it's got to have enough dip on it to go up over the wall and down. And 20 yards out is such a tight mm -hmm. space to do that in. Yeah, oftentimes you prefer a 25 yards instead of a 20. So you have time to get it over the wall and still let gravity do its work and come back down. Nava slide tackled hard. Gordy had a word with Corbin May. He didn't think that was a foul. Whistle goes. Referee's word is final. We're going to restart play. Thirty-six minute. Here's Fofana. Outside the boot pass, aiming for Hendel or an in cutting Nava. Instead, Watson is there. Barrow. Till Stockman. And there's going to be a straight red card behind the play. An absolute frustration foul. 
We have a U Portland player down. My eye was on the ball, I look back. It's, it's Pereira. Pereira is down. Hopefully we can get a replay of that challenge. You can see Pereira there on the ball and Madukwe comes in, just lands on top of Madukwe and then Madukwe takes turns around kick. and take, takes a kick, kicks out at him and a lot of frustration there from Madukwe. You know, it's it's 3-0 and you're looking at trying to do whatever to get back in the game and you know, that tackle, that challenge, there wasn't any malice in Pereira. It was an awkward and clumsy challenge from the both of them. Pereira just happens to kind of come down on top. And Duque comes in here. Pereira comes down on top and doesn't really do anything. And Maduque just gets frustrated and kicks out at him. And, and that's going to be a red card every time. Pereira, you know, I think he'll be okay. He looks to be down. Hopefully he'll be all right. Two goals, a drawn yellow card, and back up onto his feet. He's had a heroic performance so far. And, and to be clear, I, I don't think it was the kick out from Madukwe that injured Pereira. I think it was the way he fell onto Madukwe and just the weight of that and just that challenge of him coming down is where he was looking at. He came down a little bit clumsily and awkwardly on his hip. He may have had an unintended spinal adjustment there as he came down. Madukwe, who <laughs> he wanted to go back to the bench. The University of Portland uh, pitch worker said, no, you kind of got to go back to the locker room. Yeah, it so. is. When you do get red card, when you are red carded and ejected from the game, you cannot remain on the pitch. You have to go back. And, and especially when you're a visiting team, this is hard and, and awkward because then, you know, you, where, where do you go? What do you do? Are you, You're in the locker room by yourself. Yeah. And, and it's just the most frustrating feeling. It's got to be. Uh, wildly frustrating for Praise Madukwe. Meanwhile, Nava is going to take the free kick on the edge of the box. This one goes over the wall, similar to how Tunbridge does it, goes over the net. Pereira, Pereira is going to stay in the game. That's a that's an interesting location to shoot on net with your right foot. I mean, it's going to be bending in. It's going to be coming across. You you got to be making sure that you know exactly where you're going to hit. I maybe would have found somebody with a left foot to put that in towards the back post. Yeah, so Corbin May, the referee in today's game, goes over to Brian Quinn. He kind of just explained the red card a little bit. He made the exact kicking motion that Madukwe did, and May didn't have any complaints. You know, excuse me, Quinn didn't have any complaints. That's going to be a straight red card, whether it's a hard kick or not. Madukwe, I think immediately after he did it, and got caught. He's frustrated with himself. Well, it's 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 like we saw with Hendel a couple weeks ago here against Gonzaga. You know, his was a little bit of a different situation. It was a second caution, which is the red card ejection from the game. But again, it's frustration. That second yellow that Hendel got, it's frustration. It's being tired. It's being, you know, just tired of the situation that your team is in, and you can't seem to kind of get yourself mentally back in the game. And in a situation like that, where Madukwe may have you know, maybe have perceived some malice from Pereira or might be frustrated with his own self, just makes a, a mistake that is born out of frustration and tiredness and not necessarily any real malice towards Pereira. San Diego, who was picked to finish fourth in the WCC this game, have had a frustrating campaign defensively. They've now leaked 30 goals in 10 games. Lance Pierre over to O'Hara. Ortiz getting ready to come in for the University of Portland. San Diego now looks like they're defending in a 4-4-1. They take it away. The one man up top, Michael Wilkerson. It's his fifth game of the season. Hasn't played too many minutes at all. This is his first game since September 15th against UC Irvine. Number 18, ben Ortiz, his first minutes this campaign came in emergency relief at fullback when Bonilla got injured. But since coming back, he's played mostly on the flanks, but right now we're placing Handel at the top right striker position. And I think, you know, when you're looking at from a head coaching perspective, the things that are going to make a difference, you know, you have a player like Ortiz who does play wide, who likes to drift wide. When you're playing a team like San Diego, who's going to be compact, who's going to, you know, really try to 
to compress the field back there. You need a player like Ortiz to stretch the field wide. You have the speed, you have the opportunity to stretch the field long uh, through passing and with Pereira and um, with Fofana, but you need somebody like Ortiz to now stretch the back line wide and create those gaps between the back line. San Diego one and nine, their last losing season. It's a while ago. They've been a very good team under Brian Quinn, the Northern Irishman slash American head coach. First losing season since 2016 when they went six, nine, and three in just their second losing season since 2008. They're on track for their worst campaign since the early 80s. Nava leaves some room for Pierre to run onto it and back to Artiega. San Diego now have all 10 behind the ball after the Maduque red card that Pereira drew. Ortiz making a lot of runs off that San Diego back line, creating room out wide. Odenal gives an across. Barrow is there. Pereira almost first times it. Nava's going to take it instead. Has another shooting opportunity. Can he get past? No, he cannot. Perales. Odenhall, the fullback, trying to defend. Artiga gets the last touch before it goes out of play. Robert Webb was the one who had the throw in there and had the ball the majority of the time. He's taken on a lot of defenders, but has done well. Pierre fighting, using his body to his advantage and goes down. Wilkerson doesn't like it. Wilkerson scored a penalty goal last season against Gonzaga, it's only a collegiate goal. You can see here as Pierre does a, a nice job of trying to get his body between the, himself and Wilkerson so that he can turn and play back to Tassuris. And yeah, Wilkerson, as he's trying to get around him, just clips his heel and fouls Pierre. Just over four minutes to go in the half. Portland have been impressive to say the least. They control a 3-0 lead over San Diego, who's playing with 10 men. Portland exactly 500 on the campaign, trying to get to that mark in conference as well after losing their first game to St. Mary's. Pereira has Bonilla by him. He's looking for first hat trick of his career. Who's an extremely high recruit for the University of Portland four years ago. And he's come true on a lot of his promise. Number 36 recruit nationally, number two in Florida. Part of the Orlando City Academy. Barrow. Dangerous pass. Pierre, skies up. Tracy takes it away. He's got space. Has a good pass out to Ortiz. Ortiz on his left foot. Shot, save. Second opportunity. Is it in? Referee's no going to call a handball. I think that's the right decision on Fofana as well. Absolutely. No complaints by him. And what a setup there from Portland, but you see a great save there from Burke Watson. And yep, as. Barrow tries to clear it out, and it goes yep. right off the hands. Great angle of it right there. But you can see just there how Ortiz split out wide as that ball's coming up the field and really forced a choice there from the Torero back line of who they were going to mark as things got a little bit disorganized. And again, that's a great run from Ortiz and a great awareness from Tracy. Tracy picked that ball off, read the pass coming all the way through, picks it off the back shoulder of, of the San Diego player, and Ortiz splits out wide immediately, and, and Tracy plays him a great ball. Two minutes to go in the half. Portland controlling play and the game. Fofana almost had the fourth. Ortiz, naturally a righty, still did good to get off the shot with his left. Took a couple of stutter steps beforehand, but Watson ultimately made the save. 
Pereira with three sky blue jerseys around him gets it out. Nava aiming for Bonilla, not enough under it. Johnston trying to go the other way. He started out as a up top attacker, but he's dropped a little bit back further into the midfield to defend in that 4-4-1. So we, if he stays in the game and isn't subbed late, he's got a lot of running in his future. Webb. Not a lot of mistakes out of this Portland side. They've been really good in the midfield, as you see there again. Tracy chops the ball, has it on his left, over to Nava. Nava takes it on his right, inside to Ortiz. Ortiz to Fofana, he's offside. Even checking his run there, Fofana knew he was offside, probably by about a half a body length, and you see him try to just check his run a little bit, but a little too eager to get his goal today. He keeps playing the way he is. Almost had an offside goal there, had a handball goal that was obviously ruled back. He has to get it with his left or right. Maybe the noggin. 15 seconds to go. Fafana hits it off his back on the pitch. Looks to be down and in some pain. Fafana won't get that call as he comes through there. It just, you know, he, it's a little bit of a self-created situation and looking for a foul call, but Fofana will be okay. That's going to do it for the first half. Portland leads 3-0. Two goals from Pereira, one from a penalty. A Hendel, a beautiful chip as well with the right foot. Thanks for listening here on the WCC. we got 45 more minutes of action coming up after this break. Jesse Owens, American track and field athlete and four-time gold medalist in the 1936 Olympic Games. The battles that count aren't the ones for gold medals, the struggles within yourself. 
the invisible, the inevitable battles inside all of us. That's where it's at. Jackie Robinson. I'm not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. I think if we go back and check our record, the Negro has proven beyond a doubt that we have been more than patient in seeking our rights as American citizens. We aren't seeking anything which is not good for the nation as well as ourselves. In order for America to be 100% strong economically, defensively, and morally, we cannot afford the waste of having second and third class citizens. Athea Gibson, first African American woman to win a Grand Slam title. Being a champion is all well and good, but you can't eat the crown. Muhammad Ali, three time heavyweight champ. Service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on Earth. Bill Russell, 11 NBA championships and first black coach in North American professional sports and first to win a championship. The most important measure of how good a game I played was how much better I'd make my teammates play. Tommy Smith and John Carlos, champions in the 1968 Mexico City Olympics. We had to be seen because we couldn't get heard. Hank Aaron. For more than three decades, he has been best known for hitting more home runs than any other baseball player in MLB history. My motto was always to keep swinging. Whether I was in a slump, feeling badly, or having trouble off the field, the only thing to do is to keep swinging. Florence Griffith Joyner also known as Flojo, a track and field runner who is considered to be one of the fastest women of all time. In 1988, she set the world record in the 100 meter and 200 meter dash, which still holds today. When anyone tells me I can't do anything, I'm just not listening anymore. Lisa Leslie was the first WNBA player to win the regular season MVP, the all-star game MVP, and the playoff MVP all in one regular season. It's about work ethic, winning never gets old. Lolo Jones, an Olympic hurdler and bobsledder with 11 All-American honors. Greatness finds us by putting obstacles in front of us. I don't look at hurdles as obstacles blocking my path, but as opportunities to overcome. Serena Williams, you can be whatever size you are and you can be beautiful both inside and out. I always believe I can beat the best, achieve the best. I always see myself in the top position. I don't like to lose at anything, yet I've grown most not from victories, but setbacks. If winning is God's reward, then losing is how he teaches us.
Welcome back to the campus of the University of Portland. We're here at Merlot Field. It was an excellent first half for the men in purple. They currently find themselves up 3-0. About six, seven minutes until the second half kicks underway, but we may as well look at some of the highlights from their first half. There were many positive ones for the pilots. First, we see a shot from Bonilla. It was a awkward ball there that just went over the net. Yeah, and Bur Burke Watson does very well to read that. And as pilots start to get in here and get dangerous, there's Bonilla again with the great cross. And there's the handball from Robert Webb that leads to this confident, assured finish from Pereira. It was right over Watson. He guessed the right way. He, Pereira didn't need to put it far to the corners. He just needed to hit it hard enough, and he felt confident enough to do it. Pereira made it two shortly after. And another great service in, and, and we talked about this great early ball coming in. Burke Watson again comes off his line, and Pereira running through the ball. He was going to get that ball if Watson didn't make a play at it. And Portland really running at this back line, trying to make things happen. And you see it right here again with Hendel, really getting at this Torero back line, trying to find these vulnerabilities. And Hendel with a phenomenal finish outside of the right boot over a sliding Burke Watson. And what a confident, assured first half from the Pilots. Here are the stats from that first half. Portland, we mentioned it many of times, dominated possession at 62 to San Diego's 38, outshot the, excuse me, but the San Diego squad 12 to two as well, seven shots on goal, that's quite impressive. Yeah, and really when you look at, you know, what we're seeing on the screen here is it's just all attack all the time for the Pilots. San Diego, eight fouls to P Portland's five, and you know, one of those fouls coming with the kick out from Maduque that leads to the red card, and now San Diego's playing with 10 men for the last little bit of the half. And you know, if you're, if you're Coach Quinn, what you're looking at now for San Diego is what do you want your team to get out of this half? What do you want your players to learn and walk away from this game? What are you gonna get out of the next 45 minutes? And if you're Nick Carlin Voigt, you want to see your team keep it rolling. Do not take your foot off the gas because the minute you take your foot off the gas in the WCC, it comes back to bite you. So you really want to keep these this confidence going, these connections, these passing networks. You really start to develop some confidence and some teamwork together to get these goals. Portland looking to hold on to the result, go to six and five. They want to go one and one in the WCC if this three nil score line maintains. About five minutes until the second half kickoff, we'll set it to break, but when we come back, a lot more action coming your way in the WCC and Portland CW.
Disappointment and adversity can be catalysts for greatness. Kathy Freeman. Somewhere behind the athlete you've become and the hours of practices and the coaches who have pushed you is a little girl who fell in love with the game and never looked back. Play for her. Mia Hamm. I'd rather regret the risks that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Simone Biles. It's not necessarily about outworking the person across from me. It's outworking that voice inside of my head that says, I'm too tired, I don't feel like doing it, I can settle. Maya Moore. With a defeat, when you lose, you get up, you make it better, you try again. That's what I do in life. When I get down, when I get sick, I don't want to just stop. Everyone always says never give up, but you really have to take that to heart and really do never definitely give up. Keep trying. Serena Williams. Champions keep playing until they get it right. Billie Jean King. In the minds of an ordinary training day, I try to remind myself that I'm preparing for the extraordinary. Both teams back onto the pitch for the second half of action. Portland up 3-0. Moments away from the kickoff. Looks like we're gonna have a couple of substitutions, maybe a goalkeeper change for San Diego as well. Broadcasting partner, Angela Harrison. I'm Adam Sussman. Angela, you've been a coach, you've been a player before. You know, 3-0 up, you're going against a team with 10 men. For Nick Carlin Void, he's looking for that 51st career victory. Is it simple as keep doing what you're doing or are you adding more during that halftime talk? I think you're adding more. I think it is a matter of not only keep doing what you're doing, but again, what are you going to get more out of this game? They could just walk away from this second half, just kind of sustain what they have. But are they going to get better? Are they going to improve this game and continue to work on some of the things that they've been working on in training? And I think that that has to be the message that we cannot be content with three nothing uh, from Nick Carlin Voigt, that Portland really has to put put the continue to put the pressure on San Diego. So there's going to be a goalkeeper change number 44 on your screen right now. Marley Mascarenas coming into the game. He's been their starting keeper so far this season. Started all but now two games, including today. Against average 29 saves on the season. But last year, he was the real deal last season. In the five games he played, just five goals against and a 1.16 goals against average. So certainly capable, but this season hasn't been at his best. Well, it just goes to show just how up and down soccer really can be. You know, when a team gets on a hot streak, they're just going, you know, UW is a good example of that. Certainly recruiting and coaching plays into that. But, you know, when you look at this San Diego team and how well Mascarenas was playing last year, it's certainly not a matter of necessarily him playing worse. It's just a matter of how is the team coming together in front of them to really generate things and if you are slow to generate things on the attack, then you're going to be defending for a lot of the time. And when you get stuck like that as a team, it's really hard to break that cycle. Yeah, Mascarenas in the one win this season, he did pick up the clean sheet against CSU Bakersfield. That was a 2 victory at home. Certainly going to want to test him as well. Burke Watson's night is presumably over. We were talking at the Brigange. I mean, if any, those goals are not really savable. No, if anything, again, it goes back to what I was just talking about is what's going on with the team in front of you. And, and the goals themselves, the shots themselves, not savable, but the defending, the, the issues coming through in the midfield with players coming through for the Toreros, not able to really kind of close that gaps and defend effectively, that is where you're, where you're going to go wrong because the finishes themselves, pure, clean, clinical, great finishes, but it's the defending leading up to that that has to be better. Here's per left foot a shot save. Aiming for that hat trick. You can only imagine how badly he wants it. Even from a neutral's perspective, you want him to get it. It's going to be a foul. O'Hara's okay. Good sportsmanship by the duo. Tunbridge okay. Really good ball over the top. Falls into the path of Pereira's left foot shot. Give you Mascarenas a warm welcome to the match. 
And for a second half keeper, that's a heck of a save. You know, watching him warm up at halftime, coming in somewhat cold, you can tell that, you know, he really wanted to get in this game. He wanted to play and to be tested in the first minute and a half of the game like that and, and come up with a great save from that Pereira volley is just uh, tremendous from him. Certainly took the right angle on it, was about six yards off his line. Tracy leaves it off for Cortez, who's checked back in. Odenall back to the left. Left foot across is a high one over Hendel, his fellow German countryman. Moskranius can't catch it for a goal kick. It's going to be another corner for the University of Portland. Moskranius has some athletic genes. His uncle, Mark Donnell, ran for the U.S. track national team. 48th minute, quarter coming from Hendel, who's took them all today for the University of Portland. This one low and near to the post, trying to wreak havoc with that ball. Portland this season, while not a huge deal by any means, they've had a lot of different corner takers. When Frankel plays, it's usually him. Artiega's often been on that duty. But now Hendel, who started about half the games this season, sends another ball. This time to the far post, headed back inside, headed right at the keeper. Go, oh, wow, what a look for Portland, almost made it four. Yeah, that's really done well done from O'Hare to be alert to get that ball off the cross. Hendel plays a really good ball in, and it's Babalai who keeps it alive. O'Hare in a good position to attack and get it on frame there. Yeah, the center back is four years at the University of Portland, one goal. Started every game in 2019, the last full season. In the truncated campaign in 2020, played three, started three. Cambonia get onto this ball. First time cross. It's going to be an own goal. Bonilla's crosses have now yielded three goals. You may as well put his name on the score sheet. He's been excellent. And just wreaking havoc on this near sideline and on the far sideline during the first half. And Kai Peterson for the Torero is doing everything he can, but when you look at this ball coming in here, Bonilla, he's the outside back for Portland right now, and he's got so much pace getting in here, does a great job. Peterson is well aware of Hendel on his backside and just slides in there. Uh, nothing, nothing really for Mascarenas to do, and just Peterson trying to make the right play, but just the wrong execution. I think the score sheet may only say one, but between me and you and the viewers on each network, he has three. Because I know at least in the Premier League and the MLS, they don't give you an assist if it is scored an own goal. For the, in, in NCAA, Ange, I'm not quite sure. You may be the expert on that one. Uh, they can, it just is really, <laughs> there, it has to meet a ton of different criteria, but I think, you know, Bonilla definitely responsible for uh, most of the goals here for Portland. San Diego inside Portland's final third. They have less than 40% possession in the first half. Big part because they only have 10 men on the pitch. Burrow, former University of Portland product in 2019 playing center back today. Camerly, number 22 on the ball. Senior from Dana Point, California. Had a goal last week against Gonzaga. Also had season high 47 minutes, which earned him the start. A local product, his father played at the University of San Diego. He started in midfield today. San Diego deploying a low block as Pierre picks it up with his neon boots. After this game at Merlot Fields, University of Portland's women's squad will be facing San Francisco to evenly match teams. San Diego trying to play out from the back. A chipped ball over the top. Creative play. And ultimately a foul by Artiega. His name isn't uttered too much because he's more of a deep lion playmaker. But having Artiega back from injury has been a big part 
in this game. Well, he defends the, well, he reads the game well, he looks for areas to pick the ball off. He will tackle when he needs to tackle, but what he's really doing is looking to where he can kind of sit in behind the shoulder of a San Diego player and just sneak in front of him or just read the ball as it's coming off of the Toreros players and really pick those passes off. In a short 2020 season, what happened between February and April last season. Hendel in the box, a great chop. He's gonna have it on his left. Doesn't decide to shoot, give it over to Pereira instead. The chop he left, pulled up some grass as well in the box there. Field manager Kevin White, already probably a little nervous, trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out when he's gonna make that patch. He wishes the game was in the 82nd minute instead of the 52nd after that. Here's Cortese. Oh, no. As I was saying, Portland, 3-4-3 three, and three last year, just had one win in the WCC, so they'll match that with a result here as they're currently up 4-0. Pereira, edge of the box, audacious effort high and wide. Raises his hand at fault, but can't blame him. And you can see on the screen San Diego playing with 10 players, but Pereira getting that ball where he did on the top of the box and having that much time for him to be pressured and closed down. So he had time to, to make a very composed trap with his chest, pull it down, have an opportunity. San Diego has to be throwing numbers around Portland players in that position. It's almost a pseudo set piece and open play with how much room he had, you're right. About 22 yards from goal, could chest it down, take a small run up as Bonilla has a banana kick over his head. And triggles it back to Tassarice. The Cyprian keeper. Plays in the midfield, and now outright. Two home games ago against Seattle University. Became the first University of Portland keeper since 2006 to have an assist in a game. And what a game to do it. It was for the third goal. He played it long. Cambridge headed it forward to Frankel, who scored the third goal of the game to win the Coffee Cup 3-2. Bonilla in his ever-dangerous spot, heads it back into the box. Hendel tries the volley, whiffs. Burrow, header not a good one. Now headed goal side. That's gonna mark, I believe, the 10th shot on goal now for the University of Portland. Three, just 10 minutes in, one resulting in an own goal. And another misclearance here from the Toreras. That's Stockman there, just trying to clear it up. It goes up and over and just lays it in good position there for the pilots to come have their opportunity. Yeah, tell Stockman was a poor clearance there. Burroughs had her not much better. Stockman. The German went to school in France and Spain growing up, taking part in foreign exchange programs. But as the player at San Diego, he's played almost every second since 2018, almost 3,000 minutes. If he plays the full 90 next game, he'll hit that Mark Hendel offside. Till Stockman has actually played every second against the University of Portland. 110 in 2018, 90 in a 4-2 win. Two seasons ago, 110 last year, and has played the full game so far today. He's an ever-present at that fullback position. The referee now, that turf that came up a few minutes ago, definitely causing some, <laughs> some issues with the balls coming in to the penalty area, so just asking Mascarenas to, to come help him clear that up and try to get some of that grass back on the ground so that the ball can roll smoothly. Handel's chop really left a mark. Looks like someone's swinging a five iron out there. Corbin May went to move some grass around. At least for the grounds crew here at the University of Portland. Not a home game until the 27th. Got a little bit of time to grow and tis the season for rain as well. Handel almost through. Good play by Mascarenas to come out. Good position off his line. Read what Portland was trying to do there. And this is where they need to break some players wide. Bonilla wasn't there, but when you look at where some of the other players for Portland were, you know, really looking for um, Babalai to kind of maybe break wide. 
to give them some, some areas to pull apart that, that back line. That's always going to be hard for Hendel to run onto with that straight line ball, and Marley uh, Mascarene is reading it quite well. Portland keeping their foot on the gas for sure. Their next game after this is on October 23rd against Loyola Marymount. They have a large break until then, and we don't know what the rankings of that Loyola squad will be come that time, but they're currently number 16 in the country. Low cross coming in. Nick Carlin Voigt had a half shout for a handball not given. And again, that's Peterson coming, sliding through there, just trying to get it out and do anything to keep that ball from coming across. All of Portland's crosses, especially inside the 18, have been low, just trimming grass, if anything. Tracy back to O'Hara. And, and again, when you keep the ball that low, you're playing it low on the ground. Because there's so many players in the penalty area, you're very likely to get a deflection, as we've seen several different instances of tonight, where it's just chaos in there, and you can't really get that ball out to where you need it to be if you're defending it. And also not giving the defense a lot of time to react. Pereira, outside of Odenall, has on his right foot a curling effort on his non-dominant foot. Reese Gordia, starter coming back into the game, the midfielder. Luke Perdo is replaced by number 20, Taylor Perales. Perales had some positive play earlier on. Number 22, Camerly checking out from his spot in the center of midfield. Sage Bolaris, Bolaris coming into the game. Artiega there to clean up the scraps, two closed down on him, Pereira. Couldn't move it forward and left. Good turn by Tunbridge. Plays it over to Stockman. As on its right for being closed down by Tracy. That's going to be a push. We'll see if any colors come out. No. Tracy closed down while trying to go shoulder to shoulder there, but just got the back of the kit of Stockman. You and, see it's, and it's a tremendous run from Stockman, really aggressive getting in there, finding that open space that Portland really frankly shouldn't have left open, but they'd had thrown so many players up on the attack. Bonilla couldn't get back and cover that space and uh, turned uh, Stockman doing a great job making a great run. And yeah, Tracy just came through and clipped him there. They took the set piece quickly. Handel was able to clean it up after a heavy touch there and then got fouled in the process. Sage Bolaris, the one who just checked in and committed the foul there. This is the seventh game of the season, only 121 minutes total. Does have two shots on goal though. Played for the LA Galaxy San Diego Soccer Club from 2016 to 19 for showing up to the University of San Diego. San Diego, definitely a down season by all means, still a well-respected program. Made the, and made the NCAA tournament 14 times in their history, still looking for their first appearance in the last seven seasons though. Back in 1992, they came second in the entire NCAA tournament. It's their 41st season competing in Division I. Their record, 407, 301, and 79. The last time they had just one win at this point in the season was 1983. A win that had to hurt for them, Ange, was losing to University of California, San Diego, as Bonilla 
in his crossing position. Instead plays the pass, a one, two, Stockman in there for the sliding challenge. But Mascarenas yeah. plays it out quickly. He's done well, Mascarenas, with his distribution. The Stockman effort that resulted in the foul and free kick for San Diego started with a great distribution from Mascarenas, and you can see his presence already amping up these Torero side. Polaris takes a spill, but trying to stay on the ball. O'Hara can't just shield off as he was the last to touch, and now goes into touch for a San Diego throw. University of California, San Diego, we're in, they are currently in their first season as Division I club and did beat San Diego by a scoreline of two to one this season on September 22nd. Pendel over to Pereira, playing it out wide to Babale. Couple of players slipping, Pereira does as well. Sun has shined through a couple of times at Merlot Fields. But mostly a cloudy day, good temperature for soccer, high 50s, low 60s. Ortiz to Odenhall. 30 yards from net, Tracy. Greg Tracy, the Colorado Rapids Academy product. Hasn't played too many minutes this season, but has been awfully impressive today in the center of the park. Tunbridge, nice scoop turn, gives it out left. Shooting opportunity, that's going to be in. One assist by Tunbridge as the scoop turn. The guts to do that, running at two center backs, and then plays it out to the right. The assist better than the goal, but give credit to the finish as well. Just a nice little pull there. Not sure where Portland was going with this defending, but I believe that's Robert Webb, number 24, scoring for the Toreros. And Webb has been playing outside back, so just San Diego kind of beating Portland at their own game, getting their numbers forward from the back and really putting that pressure on. And Nick Carlin Boyd's not going to be happy with his back line there because they certainly should have done better defending, and they lose the shutout because of it. Yeah, the two fullbacks have been so advanced this game and for the most part it's been a positive Bonilla has created three goals but Odenall the far side fullback that's his territory in defense and ultimately the two center backs were left stranded closing in on Tunbridge well but be between the two center backs between O'Hara and Pierre they have to do a better job of managing that situation with Tunbridge running at them but yeah with Webb running all the way forward it's not just on Odendahl but it's on the entire Portland defense it's looking really square in the face of Artiaga and Tracy who are playing in that holding mid role of how are they preventing these passes out wide and how are they covering for Odendahl when he's trying to get back nearly a incredible goal scoring opportunity I think it was going to be offsides anyway but Cato was there to receive Ortiz's ball here's the cross by Ortiz actually looks on side it's close but the lineman the linesman the AR1 was right on that line as I looked at that position down down where uh, he was in and he was right on that line so well positioned to make that call the 4-1 scoreline ties the most in a UP game so far this season when they won 3-2 is what draws this for San Diego soccer. They've had a lot of high scoring games. There was five last game, 3-2. A through ball trying to find Perales, but instead O'Hara is there. He's gonna be fouled beforehand. It's gonna be offside, I believe the call is, and O'Hara really having to work hard there to get the ball back. And San Diego with some life back in them, really looking for these opportunities. And this is what I said before the game. They haven't been shut out. They've lost their last five games. Uh, the last four, they have not been shut out. So they really are looking to make these competitive matches and them doing what they've been doing, playing with 10 men. Sometimes that makes defending easier. It makes things a little more efficient on the field when you take one less, when you take one player off the field and uh, really having a go at Portland right now in this middle stretch of the second half. And there are 11 games this season. They've only been shut out three times. Have conceded 33 goals nonetheless. 
a long through ball. Ortiz appreciated the effort, but Stockman is there to intercept. Just under a third of the game to go. Cato. Pacey Ford capable of playing out wide as well. He's looking for his first goal of the season. Artiega to Ortiz. Out wide, Odendahl. Loses his footing in the box. Kato's gonna pick it up on the periphery. About 20 yards out, the pass to Bonilla behind the fullback, can't get there. That's M. Kato, born in Kenya. One of the younger players on this team, born in February of 2002. This is his sixth game of the season. Tunbridge, who had the great assists for the goal, was replaced. He's been the lone front man. His goal ended up being assisted. He assisted the goal for a fullback. Certainly runners beside him. Cato from Montverde, Florida. Played a good chunk against UC San Diego last month. We're gonna get his first goal of the season against San Diego. 4-1, 67th minute. Portland's trying to respond after the San Diego goal. Possession, obviously, their best friend in a 4-1 game. Most goals they've scored this season. They've yet to win a game this season by more than a goal, and they're doing that. Excuse me, they won 2-0 against Air Force, but since that game on August 27th, they haven't won by more than a goal. O'Hara to Tracy. O'Hara doesn't have his usual sidekick, Rodwell, next to him. The freshman from New Zealand. Started every game this season, but Delance Pierre, who's back from injury, has been deployed all over the back line. Kipple has a center back and a fullback. It's going to be an offside on Stockman. Yeah, and as soon as that ball got played, I had a feeling he was just right over that back line of Portland. And Definitely in offside position. Ortiz has one step over, but the pass is as nice as the skill. It's going to be out for a Portland throw in. Some common names we haven't seen so far today for the Pilots. No Cambridge, no RJ Stretch. Played plenty of minutes this season. They'll get an extended break with no game next week. Well, Portland will need R.J. Stretch in their next matchup. Stretch on four yellow cards. If he does get a fifth, that means he's suspended for the next game, and that's a game that uh, Carlin Voigt cannot afford to have him out for. That's a great call. Odenall out wide. Misplays it for a second, but regains control. Hendel taking a strong touch forward. Probably one to shoot with the left. Corner coming. <laughs> I guess we cursed that RJ Stretch is coming into the game. Stretch on those four yellow cards. I'm sure Nick Carlin Voigt let him know, hey, don't get a fifth. I'm probably going to need you to start against number 16, Loyola Marymount. Ricocheted off a couple of heads and out for a goal kick. In comes RJ Stretch. Ondahl leaves the game. In comes Stretch, the senior from Spokane, Washington, part of the Sounders Academy. And when we saw him against Washington, he played in the center of the park. So definitely a versatile player with a good defensive acumen. 
And right now that's a good sub for Carlin Voigt, even though we talked about stretch and managing his time on the field. But right now, San Diego finding a lot of joy down that right side. That's where their goal came from and really just trying to shore up that right side and keep things organized and make sure that San Diego can't find another opportunity down there. Yeah, with Bonilla playing so advanced, I think RJ Stretch has generally played the role of the more reserved fullback. O'Hara over to Pierre. Pierre, instead of passing to his right consistently to O'Hara, now has that option out left to a closer RJ stretch. Kato tiptoes the sideline. Tracy challenged. Ultimately kept possession. Bonilla, look at the stamina from him coming all the way back from SD's final third back to his own to make the play. And just wonderful awareness there from Tesuris with Pardo closing in on him. Pardo anticipating that long clearance out off the first time because of his pressure, gives a little jump and Tesuris anticipates that and just a nice little pass back out wide to Bonilla. Kato wins a throne for his team. Call it six yards away from the near side corner flag. The other man who's a normal starter, who's coming in for the final 20 minutes or so, Brandon Cambridge, the Canadian replacing the German Hendel. What do you make of Hendel's performance today? Just quality, very solid all the way through. I still think, you know, man of the match is probably for me going to be Bonilla, but Hendel right there, he was our player to watch before the game. Just a very solid, disciplined performance from him up top, doing all the things that you need to do as that player and really providing that leadership. You know, he's, he's an upperclassman. He's uh, really setting the way and leading the way for these pilot players and uh, really showing them how to get it done out there. San Diego looking for numbers forward. Passes and a good one as Pierre is able to slide tackle it back and finally get it to O'Hara. Looks like Pierre may have outstretched a little bit. He was down for a second. Bonilla over to Artiega. Cambridge, his 11th game of the season, he started nine. His lone goal came against Sacramento State. We talked about the four penalties Portland has been awarded this season. Cambridge, a reason for two of them. Probably the fastest player on this team, you could say. Cato, Fofana, maybe even Bonilla. They have an argument, but Cambridge probably uses his pace better than anybody I've seen. Pereira dropping back from his forward position. It's almost a 4-4-1-1 with Pereira playing a little bit deeper. Ortiz looks to be the point man. 74th minute, Portland up 4-1. Game has settled a little bit since that San Diego goal. It was a little bit end-to-end. -end. Portland was sniffing five, but now I think they'll be happy with four and keeping possession. Well, I don't know. I mean, Portland right now is pushing three players into the attack. They've moved Cambridge out wide. Hendel was playing kind of a uh, attacking center mid position when Cambridge came on for him. And there it is. <laughs> that's what Portland wanted to do. They were looking to get that width, and that's just a great goal. San Diego playing in that low block. Pereira, Hendel just kind of couldn't solve it, and they needed that width that wide, and Cambridge right there, right away. I instant impact. Four of the five goals have come when they switch play out right. They've clearly sought that out as a weakness. Cambridge's pass. That is just, sorry, that is just a wonderful touch by Cambridge and somebody who's coming in cold to the game. Look at that, just. Takes it down perfectly. On a platter for himself and just sets it up for Pereira. And again, Pereira, wonderful goals tonight. His teammates doing what good teammates do and making it easy for him to finish. Three goals in three touches. I think obviously he's had more touches in the game, but for the three he's had to score, one was a penalty, one fell perfectly in his path, and that one was a first time finish. Per zero goals before tonight, now a hat trick and 10 goals in his University of Portland career. Everyone giving him 
a warm applause in the crowd and on the bench. And Carlin Voigt now just feeling comfortable enough to pull Pereira off. He's his main string puller, but now he's done the work that Carlin Voigt needed him to do, and he'll get a break as Nava comes onto the field. But just a, a solid outing today from a lot of Carlin Voigt's leaders on this team. You know, when you think about Pereira, when you think about Hendel, very solid disciplined performances. So Pereira just had one start in the opening five games. And I think something switched, started performing well in practice. He had impact as a sub. Started now five of the last six. And it certainly paid off with three goals this afternoon at Merlot Fields. 5-1, pilots up most goals this season. Rodwell into the game at center back, taking O'Hara out. O'Hara now, and you know, I can't say on the broadcast anymore, Angela, he's played every second this <laughs> season. Guess they've taken that away from me, but five. You got, you got to Suri still. <laughs> I believe he is now the only one who's played every second this season. Ortiz, does he have the pace? Just bodied out of the way. Now cleared off. Tassarice, there was a moment against Seattle U in the Coffee Cup. He picked up an ankle injury, was down for a good five minutes or so, but remained in the game. Sophomore connection between Bonilla and Cambridge, one that's certainly exciting this season, but you can only stop yourself from daydreaming for the next two, two really talented young players for the University of Portland. Cato. Pass isn't there for stretch. It's intercepted. A lot of subs getting ready to come in. Including Adrian Aguiar. Aguiar picked up some minutes against St. Mary's. Has one start on the campaign against Sac State. Stretch. High cross in with the left foot. Meets Cambridge on the other end. 77th minute. Nava over to Cambridge. Another nice touch. Takes it to the end line. Low cross in, deflected. Portland have certainly had an identity this game. Large-scale applause for three players who've played every minute this game. Pierre checks out, Bonilla checks out, as well as Artiega in the center of the park. Hatcher, Aguiar, and Kagramanian come in. And as I see it right now, Tracy, the only remaining starter of outfield players for Portland, anchoring in the middle of the field, that holding mid-roll. Ton of substitutions for sure. And we talked about my every second rule. It looks like a backup keeper is coming in for Tassarice as well. Cambridge sprinting down the line, really strong challenge. That should be a yellow, it is. Barrow came from a center back position, clipped the ankles of Cambridge. Yeah, you can see Michael Barrow just coming in late there. He gets over commits on his player as he steps up and the ball gets played past him and he has to just come through and, and slide and make the challenge because he's out of position and he has no idea what's going on behind him. So has to make that challenge. Certain yellow card, Ortiz. Plays it to Nava quickly. Been absolutely bombarding the right flank in both halves. Ortiz back to stretch. Stretch is currently at right back. Looks like Aguiar when he checked in for Bonilla. Moved over to the left, stretch, came to the near side. Nava has stretch as an option, gets it there. Yeah. 
What can Cambridge do here? Back to net. Now puts his chest forward to it. The cross in, immediately deflected out for a corner. This is their seventh corner kick of the game. You heard over the PA, Jacopo Viola, who was the primary starter last season coming into the game. Played 635 minutes last year. He's Italian, born in Luxembourg. Grew up in Milan. Almost a header goal off the corner. And now George Tassaris leaves the game. Conceded one. Faced three San Diego shots. Cato does very well there in the attack. Coming up, trying to make something of it. Three other keepers listed on this Portland roster. Aviola, although he lost his starting position to Tassaris, has been the primary backup the whole season. Almost a successful passing sequence, but now Cambridge can go the other way. Has Ortiz at the top of the box, is going to leave it off of Fofana. Cross inside. A little bit too much heat under it as Ortiz can't get there in time. And that's great awareness from RJ Stretch. He dispossesses the ball, knows exactly where Cambridge is to make this pass to him. And Cambridge, just a lovely pass out wide for that opportunity. Abuba Fofana cross too close to the keeper. Ortiz was open about nine yards away. Stockman plays it back to Barrow. Header, aimed too close at the sideline. Aguiar offered to take the throw and Cato did instead. 10 minutes to go, pulling up 5-1. Smooth sailing for the Pilots. Smooth flying, probably works better. Sailing, actually, it's riverboat pilots. <laughs> Kato somehow gets into a dangerous area. Tunbridge, I was going to say he's off sides, but he's in his own end. He's been the most skillful player in blue so far today. An entirely new 11 on the pitch from those who started. Nick Carlin Voigt, this will be his 51st career victory as a head coach in his sixth season at the University of Portland. Had a baby boy on Thursday. Good week for him. Kagramanian. Tries to make up for his error, but a skillful Pardo gets a pass few. The pass frustrates the San Diego back line. Now here's Nava going the other way. Good, strong challenge. Cato picks up a loose change. Cambridge has it on his left, plays a 1 2. Can he get there in time? Cross comes in. It's awkward, but hauled in. 82nd minute. San Diego have played this entire second half with 10. Pardo bodies off Cato. Fofana trying to get it back for his team. Tunbridge has it with the left foot, tries an effort. First time Viola has seen the ball come in his direction. Thanks for joining us here on the WCC Network and Portland CW. Due to time restrictions, we won't have much of a post-game show. We'll have to send it back out to regularly scheduled program. But I think with the 5-1 scoreline, we can start breaking it down rather soon. Portland opened this game really hot. 
After the third goal, I called it a party in Portland. That's what it's turned into. Not for the men in blue, though. For the fans in attendance, if you bought a ticket, you get admission to the next game, which is University of Portland women's side facing San Francisco, a big WCC matchup between two evenly matched teams. If you're not fortunate enough to be at Merlot Field, you can go to portlandpilots.com, click the schedule for the women, and you can click watch. It'll take you right over to the WCC network where you can watch that game in great quality. My partner, Angela Harrison, will be on the call for that one. What are you looking forward to in that game? Just looking forward to see how the pilot women really bounce back from uh, what was a tough match on Wednesday night. They'd really battled, gone up two to one, and then ultimately in the last 10 minutes of the game, lose that game three to two. And so looking forward to seeing how they rebound, what they uh, can take away from that game and bring into uh, tonight's matchup. We'll be picking up the nightcap here at Portland's campus as Kato trying to sniff out that goal, cannot. <laughs> German Sanga coming into the game. A tremendously talented player in his time at Memphis. Hasn't picked up too many minutes at Portland, though he does have two starts in big games as well. Started against Oregon State in his time at Memphis. So all ACC rookie team. And in the last full campaign there in 2019, all ACC second team. To clarify, the women are kicking off at 7 p.m. Will the men finish this game? Obviously, in about five minutes. Should be all smiles for Nick Carlin Voigt's program the next week. Nava over to Sanga. Nava, edge of the box, thinks about a shot with the right, takes it inside instead. Aguilar, all the way out to Kevromanian. Portland coming off three consecutive losses. Snap their losing streak and more at Cambridge. Inside, almost a really nice touch. Nava, edge of the box, deflected. I wouldn't say almost. I'd say that was a really nice touch to keep the ball alive and then just the awareness to drop it back there to Nava. Give the Pilots another look at the goal mouth. Thought Nava whiffed the shot, but it's going to go out for a corner. Instead, they say deflection. That is a good touch there. And good hustle to get back on the touch, even if it was a little heavy. Well, just, just in that awareness of knowing where Nava is to tackle that ball out to him, knowing he's going to be challenged, just trying to get it in the general direction of Nava. Yeah, that is Nava's favorite spot on the pitch, just 19, 20 yards out. He loves hanging out on the top of the box, especially if it's on the opposite flank of him. Coming in today, he led this team with shots, and he was the team's leading goal scorer, but Pereira's three puts him at the top of that chart. Senga, Nava, trying to feed it in to Fofana. Portland not making the mistake they did when they gave up their one goal, consistently now have four back. You don't see uh, Bonilla and Odenhall practically being wingers. Kagramanian does well in defensive midfield. Three minutes left. Just to be a San Diego player holding his knee. John Stone trots away towards play. Looks to be okay. Two and a half minutes to go. Ortiz trying to frustrate Mascarenas. Stockman's fouled. Just over two minutes left in this game. 
Angie, I know it's nearly impossible, but is there anything Portland needs to work on after this game, or is it too hard to say after a 5-1 result? Well, I think, you know, that goal that they gave up is going to frustrate the Portland coaching staff. It was kind of the middle spell. Portland more or less switched off from about the 55th to the 65th minute, and you're playing against a team that's been playing with 10 men, played against with 10 men for the better part of the first half, and, and obviously has been playing without that, that extra player, without that 11th player. They can't give up a goal in those situations. They can't switch off. They have to improve and make sure that, you know, when they're flying high, when they're working well together and they're, everything's clicking on offense, that they don't go to sleep on defense. But I think the biggest takeaway, sorry to interrupt, the biggest takeaways I think right now for Nick Carlin Voigt is no injuries, no red cards. He's going to have his full team available for the next match, a very big matchup, as you said, against LMU, and uh, a lot of good things to build on for them over the next couple weeks headed into that matchup. This is the second tied for second biggest loss of the season for San Diego. Tied with their second game of the season against Lipscomb, where they lost 4-0. First game of the season against UC Santa Barbara, where they did lose 7-1. So they team that needs to stop leaking goals if you want to be competitive in the WCC. Just a minute left in the game. Three versus three opportunity. Cambridge takes it inside, takes a low shot. Fofana badly wanted. He probably should have got it. Well, and just a good effort there from Cambridge. And you can see Stockman coming over to block and almost got a deflection off of Stockman trying to get a boot in there and keep that ball from going to Mascarenas. Cambridge in the box. Shot low. Good save. 30 seconds left. Portland still the aggressors. Tunbridge being faced by a couple. Let's see the skill here. Gets past two really well. Takes it to his right foot, almost back to his left. Can't get the goal scoring opportunity. He's going to lay down in the Merlot field grass, taking a quick break. That's a tremendous tackle from Rodwell there to get his foot on the ball and just continue to frustrate Tunbridge. And I think right now, the picture of him on the field right now is about the picture of San Diego's day. Tunbridge has been frustrated throughout most of the second half. Couldn't find anybody up top. He's had to create a lot of things himself, you know, between him and Pardo going it alone. Um, you know, that's the story of Portland's game. They've done well to isolate and cut off the San Diego attack and turn into uh, five goals for themselves. Portland snapped their three-game losing streak in a great fashion. A final score here from Merlot Field, 5-1. Thanks for joining us on the WCC Network and Portland CW. We'll talk to you next time at home against Gonzaga on the 27th.